guys, it's your boy here, Mark. Here, Mark, we're back for our last segment of our last episode. Before we end it off and then talk about it, about the RGT highlights, maybe give me a summary of what was your favorite moments of the whole NBA season this year. I know it was a bit affected with, with the pandemic, but I know you guys have some memorable moments of this whole season before we ended. Uh, definitely postseason, or yeah, postseason when OG hit the last uh, game winner shot, mm-hmm. even though it was a blooper, but it's still one of my favorite moments. And during the season when Terrence Davis managed to hit a career high. Mm. Little, yeah, so mm. he's that little gem. That was probably one of my favorite moments seeing him with that. Awesome. Did yeah. you cry when that happened? Because I know you were emotional when we were watching the fi- finals last year. Oh my god, I cried <laughs> during the finals <laughs> last year. I remember. I, I didn't. We're I didn't cry. That. Obviously, this. I didn't cry when he made it, hit his career high. But I was very. It was a very proud moment, like a mom moment for me. <laughs> yeah. That's my guy. He's my little baby. That's my OG. <laughs> My favorite moment was the battle postseason in the bubble between Donovan Mitchell and Canadian Pride. Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray. That was actually what I was, was going to say. His, my favorite is Jamal Murray. He just in kind general. of coming out and just like dominated the uh, the whole postseason. Yeah. Right. Hey, that's my, that's my favorite moment. Well, yours was Donovan against what Jamal. Mine was just Jamal the whole the whole playoffs when he just kind well, of came like and Well, like eight straight over. wins too when they were in, mm-hmm. when the bubble. Yeah. So. yeah. And he did the MJ... Uh, the oh, that switch was nice. on oh, LeBron, yeah. on the that king. Nice. LeBron's like, what yeah. happened? Yeah. yeah, but Jamal versus Donovan Mitchell is my favorite moment. Yeah. My you, favorite too is uh, the, just the Heat players in general. I mean, Jimmy Butler has been a, a pleasure to watch this whole... Like, he kind of brought this team together and just kept the them... Glue, like, yeah. yeah. And Tyler Hero is just like fun to watch. Fun fact, he was, yeah. he was the first player born in the 2000s to make it... Postseason, finals. like to make it to the finals. Wow, wow! So that's a huge like mark and his for his rookie like, year. In his rookie, and his year. rookie year, and he was a big part. It was not like he was, a yeah. huge part. Yeah. He made a huge impact yeah. with that team and everything yeah. too. So I, I, if he just if develops himself defensively, like he could be the next Clay Thompson. Like just his shot is perfect. It's he's clean. got that off ball. Yeah, he's got handles too. Mm. Right, develop defensively, and you got a two way player from Miami, and you can build around him and Bam. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, especially mm. with Bam. Probably one of my favorite players drink. Yeah. Well, season oh. two. Yeah. We're gonna definitely miss the NBA. I mean, we got some really good so highlights from it. What are they? What are they rumored to start? Like December, March? I beg we, your pardon, March. Like, dang, that's Let's so hope long. It's not till March. Let's hope it's around January, maybe February at the latest. Well, keep in mind, regular yeah. season would be well. After postseason, when they win the championship, it'd be done in around June. So they would mm-hmm. have what four months? Four or five months. Four or yeah. five months. Yeah. yeah. Dang. And, but um, then there's other players that haven't played in so long, right? Yeah. So this so is just They got to find a way to keep, well, even everything is closed down. So they got to find a way to keep it. We're also going to start the season. Everybody's breaking shots. Yeah. And everybody's just like grasping for air after like two minutes of play. So, mm. well, that's all we got, guys, for our NBA highlights and favorite moments. But we also have something to show you guys to end off our season. This is from uh, our coverage of the RGT women's exclusive run we were able to be there and watch these girls who have played college philippines and in division one type of level of basketball so we wanted to see and showcase you guys what we were at and we also get the chance to interview and get to see what made them play basketball and how they wanted to inspire more women out there filipino canadian women out there to play basketball so check this out what up guys, it's your boy here, Marky Mark from Pinoy Bounce on Filipino TV. We're here at the Playground Toronto, hosted by RGT Basketball for the Women's Exclusive Basketball Round. We got Filipino Canadians here running some hoops, so check this highlights out. I'm here with the organizers of the RGT Women's Exclusive Run. Now let's just talk about the inspiration of this run. How did it come about? Well, you know, a couple of weeks we had the uh, exclusive men's run um, and, you know, we wanted to provide the same opportunity for the Phil Canadian women. You know, the, we have a handful that are playing at a high level, college, university, a um, couple of playing pro that are not here because because they're there right now. And we got a couple, of, you know, we had two high school girls here who really showed out today. And what a platform. You had a lot of women play that are playing in college. Now, Norm, can you talk about just the, the level of play that you saw today? What did you, well, what did it excited you and what did you see from them today? Yeah, it was amazing that um, a lot of, I didn't even know, to be honest, I didn't even know there was a lot of Filipino women talent like what I saw today. Um, they got after it on both ends. Some familiar faces that I knew, um, 
Shout out to Candice, Chloe, some uh, vets. And then um, I heard a lot, of, a lot of good things about the, the new and upcoming players, especially um, the high school player Tej, Teja. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was really impressed. I like what I saw, they got after it. And uh, yeah, really happy with the results. Tell us what it's like playing with the girls here. Um, it's really um, refreshing. Refreshing because these girls have been playing, you know, you know, more than me lately. So I haven't played college in for like five, five years. So seeing these girls actually run and you know, it's, it's a challenge and I love, I love it. I love the challenge. Tell us a little bit about your experience playing overseas and playing for the, uh, in the Philippines school. What is it like for you? Oh man, in the Philippines, um, I used to play for USC, so go step. And um, yeah, there it's really, really different here because everyone there is basically like a guard. So everyone is, fa the, the motion is faster, you know, so it's, it's hard to adjust. But, you know, once you get it, you know, it's it's a good thing to overcome. Just a message to these girls, like I hope they just continue to play, you know, especially, you know, carrying the Filipino flag, the Philippine flag. You know, I hope that they just continue to do this, continue to do what they love, because a lot of um, women players, especially in the Philippines, don't get recognized. Right. So that's what we're trying to get to right now, especially in the Philippines, since there's going to be um, a pro league now there. So I hope some of these girls try out, you know, they have potential to be great. We just kind of want to continue to build the whole the whole community. Uh, and the level of play, get the best female players together under one one roof on the same court to just kind of go at it and hopefully provide opportunities for them. There's been a couple of women that have already made the jump to go to school in the Philippines. Like, you know, the one that comes to mind who's not here is actually Camille, where she's playing um, over at NU right now, right? So that's another option for, for the Filipino Canadians that maybe even a year ago it wasn't, right? Two years ago, five years ago, for sure wasn't. So we're just trying to provide that platform and, and raise the awareness for, for the women's game. You know, I have a personal little inspiration with that because I have a daughter and you know, my goal is hopefully when she's ready to go that this women, this discrepancy with the men's and ga women's game might be a little less, you know? So they'll have the same kind of opportunities that men have. What are your thoughts with uh, with Mark and Ray and all this? Their opportunity to put something like this, where they have exclusively women ladies playing basketball and getting to know each other and getting some sort of exposure. Oh man, and the only thing that I can say is, you know, it's about damn time. You know, it's about time they actually put together a run like this, a women's run, all Filipino. You know, it's good to see um, people from your heritage actually do these. So it's pretty cool that um, you know Coach Ray and uh, Mark and Norm are actually able to do this, pull this off. Now talk about RGT in general. Are there any other upcoming announcements or anything that ever anyone should be looking forward to? Yeah, for sure. This was not this was not a one-off thing. We're definitely planning another men's run, another women's run. High school boys and girls definitely also in the works. Yeah, like, these are not one-off things. We want to keep this going, keep building the networks, keep building the communities, and just keep the high, the high level of basketball up. That is all for Pinoy Bounce this season. This is the Aww. finale. I'm sad, but happy. Don't cry. For the future of basketball. And yeah, anything you'd like to end off with? Any last words? What's your spinoff then for the end after the season? <laughs> I think we all have spinoffs. No, I'm trying to, uh, I'll probably make some funny, funny videos and funny show, hopefully. Uh, how about you guys? What do you guys want to do when you have a lot of time now? Probably work. Um, we're definitely going to catch the, you know, draft pick and everything too. Mm -hmm. Wait for preseason. Yeah. I'm just waiting on basketball again. Please mm -hmm. come back. But yeah, be, be sure to check us out on all social media platforms, you know, like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. And yeah, make sure to like and follow us. Pinoy mm -hmm. Bounce. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Marky? Well, I just want to make a great big congrats for having PJ back here this season for us. And the big congrats for Ingrid for having his her first season completed. <laughs> there you no go. Balance. Like you know, it was a long season, but it was worth it. Usually we end quite early around mm. June, right? Yeah. But it was extended all the way to now, right? It's a so, damn bubble. Yeah. How was your first season with us so far? The bubble. Oh, it's been good. It's yeah. been a lot of fun and everything. Been in and out, and I know, but um, just because of the whole thing with going on with the pandemic. But yeah, 
it's been good trying to stay safe, uh, you know, washing my hands, not touching everything like what Goober, Goober, Gobert did. Who's a Goober? Goober. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this whole season with us and I hope you stay, uh, stay connected with us. You guys can always find us on at Pinoy Balance on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, or you can connect to us through our own uh, direct social media pages on Instagram, DM us, connect with us. We love basketball and we like the fact that we get to connect with everybody else outside of just our studio, but also in our social media pages. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this season. Yeah, watch out. We might have some special, special coverage. Spin-offs. Uh, Spin-offs. And Tournaments. Us playing. Mm. But that's it. Thank you guys for joining us here at Pinoy Bounce Woo. and stay safe. Wash stay, your hands. Stay bouncing, stay balling. Woo.